Mario Martin. In between training sessions right now, grabbing a bite at my favorite sushi spot. I come here a couple times a week. It's delicious. Um, just taking some time out before I gotta get back out there. I started racing BMX when I was five, um, but the story goes I was off training was at two and a half. My dad raced in the late 80s. I don't remember not being on the bike. You know, as long as I can recall, I've been at a BMX track playing in the dirt and on two wheels. Um, I don't remember my first race. It just, it's all always been a part of my life. And then with this Olympic format that got kind of introduced in 2007, along with that, we got a World Cup series um, in that format. So I get to travel all over the world uh, and train it and ride at different tracks and then compete at different tracks. We usually have four to five plus a world championships every year, um, World Cups that are all over the world. And so we get to kind of showcase the sport at the Olympic level, show people what it's like and kind of help build programs in other countries. BMX is an explosive sport. It's 30 seconds long, maybe 40 seconds depending on the course. We'll see probably about 38 seconds in London. Um, see, there's no room to really just pace yourself. Like it's an all out sprint super, you know, you're going to see moves made, you're going to see crashes, but the difference being, you know, through qualifying, if I'm in second place and I know I'm like moving on, I'm not going to stress about that. I'm going to be patient. And then when the gate drops for the final, anything goes, you know, everyone's going to be making risks and, and doing moves out there to get in the position. In 2008, I crashed at the final qualifier. I was the lead girl to go. Myself and, and my training partner at the time, Joe Kittner, were separated by 14 points. And we both thought we were going. We thought we had two women's positions for the United States. I was going to be lead and she was going to be, you know, the, the coach's pick or whatever. And going into that last race, I was feeling good. All I needed to do was, you know, make the semifinal and I had my spot on the team. And coincidentally, I crashed in the quarterfinal. I didn't really get hurt physically that much. but. The cards fell the way they did and you know certain countries got girls into the final and we ended up losing our second women's position. Uh, at the same time Jill ended up advancing to the finals and she ended up beating me out by one point. So it came, I went from being the lead girl to go to not going at all by one point within a matter of about 30 minutes which was devastating at the time because my in-laws had booked tickets. I thought I was there. I was already given interviews like yeah I'm going to Beijing, I'm the lead girl to go and then it didn't happen. I think the biggest difference between now and Beijing was my maturity and patience. I was kind of hot-headed, like jumping the gun all the time. Um, the reason I think I crashed is because I was like, I was in a qualifying position when I crashed, but I, was, I wanted to win it and I was just pushing too hard. Uh, that's the biggest thing I really learned this time around in this qualifying was just I needed to be patient and to be smart and to read the tracks, to read the riders. And it worked out. I got, I got my spot on the team this time. Um, so going into the games now, I just get to focus on um, you know, the work that needs to be done to win a medal. Physically, I think I'm there, and mentally, I think I'm there. It's just a matter of getting it done when the gate drops. our sport you know as an athlete we have to be adaptable to every different kind of course at the supercross world cup format which is what i, I train on and what i'm going to be doing for the games here we start on a three and a half story start ramp pretty tall we're reaching speeds of 30 to 40 miles an hour over those first few jumps uh, and those first few jumps there's typically going to be two or three down that first straightaway they'll vary in size and shape what we have here behind me is the london replica course uh, we built this track as close as we could to what London will be. Obviously, to give us a huge advantage going into the game, being very familiar with the kind of terrain we'll be on. What drives me on and off the track is the opportunity to succeed. Uh, really, like, to challenge myself. I love being challenged. Setting new heights and accomplishing them and then setting them even higher. Really just reaching towards what's possible. It's cliche to say, but my advice is never give up. 
every great athlete, every champion, every Olympian has overcome so much to get to where they are uh, because they didn't give up. You're not going to find an, an Olympian that had it all handed to them on a silver platter. Guaranteed. Everyone I know that's made it this far has had to overcome some kind of major obstacle to get here. So when you hit that obstacle, when you hit that tripping step, pick yourself up and keep on going. Anything is possible, really. And when I was 10 years old, I wanted to be an Olympian. I saw that 96 team, I wanted to be an Olympian. Well, I wasn't doing a sport that was an Olympic sport. But I believed that one day I was going to be an Olympian. And as I got to be 17, 18, and they started talking about the Olympics, okay, it's real, we're going in. You're going to be there in 2008. And then I broke my back, and they said I'd never ride a bike again. They said that was impossible. I made it possible. Anytime someone tells you you can't do something, there's always a way to reach for it. Uh, you might, it might take some time. It took me 21 years of racing BMX to become an Olympian, but I got there. So it's worth the energy, and it's worth the work.